Hi guys, this is Nessie, and welcome to part 2 of the Final Fantasy XIV TeamCraft Beginner's Guide. This video is going to be going over the search tool and the list tool on the TeamCraft website. Both tools are very powerful and have the potential to save you a lot of money, even if you don't craft or gather. Buckle in and stick around to the end of this video for some kill saving information for non-crafters. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series yet, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Let's start off with the search feature. When you go to the TeamCraft website, the search bar is the first thing you're going to see. Right above the search bar are a set of filters that can help narrow down your search before you type anything in. These filters are broken down into type, item type, patch, and language. Type and item type seem redundant, but you can search for more than just items with the TeamCraft search feature. You want to know where a mob spawns? You can set the type to monster and search for the name of the mob. For most mobs, it will give you a description of which patch the mob was released in, as well as a map to their spawn locations. You can also look up abilities, lead quests, and multiple other non-item related things. Item type is pretty self-explanatory. Armor, consumable, weapon, food, and materials. You can narrow down your search using this filter to get fairly specific on what you're looking for. Say you're looking for a mithril sword, but don't want to have to filter between the other 50 plus types of mithril items to find what you're looking for. You can pick Gladiator's Arm, and it will only show you the Gladiator weapons with Mithril in its name. Patch allows you to select which patch database you want to look at. If you're a dancer and you want to see all the weapons available to you from 70 to 80, you can select 5.0 and see all the base Shadowbringer dancer weapons. Language allows you to change the language of the search results, which is awesome if you're not a native English speaker. This ties in nicely with a recent addition to being able to translate crafting macros into a client's native language through TeamCraft. So if you don't speak great English and are playing on a German client, TeamCraft has your back. Now let's get into the actual search itself and some of the things you can do with it. We are going to be searching for the Classical Battle Axe. When we type in Classical, you can see it brings up a whole list of everything in the game that includes the name Classical. There's quite a few, so let's finish the search with Battle Axe. Now we have a singular result. There are quite a few things you can do from here. If you click on the checkbox, it brings up a selection menu giving you the option to add battle axe to a list or reset the selection. We will get more into lists in a moment, so let's hit reset selection. Clicking on the weapon icon, or the eye with a circle around it, will bring up a page of all that item's information. This page tells you what job it's for, all the stats for normal and high quality, its trade limitations, if it can be dyed, etc. It also puts a recipe on the page for crafted items, telling you the requirements to craft and all the materials required for the final craft. There is more we can do with this information, but we will get into that during the list portion of this video. Below the item name, there are a few icons, which are links to external websites that may have further information about the item. There are links to Garland Tools, Gamerscape, and Universalis, as well as a 3D model of the item. The last link is market board information. This is the part that will make you money, even for non-crafters and gatherers. Clicking on the market board information will give you a list of the market board prices for your server for the item, updated every few minutes from a website called Universalis. Gone are the days where you were running back and forth from the market board to the Poetics vendor, trying to figure out the most lucrative item to sell on the list. Just log into TeamCraft, do a few searches, and have the information right in front of you. The Add Data button you can mostly ignore. From what I can tell, it's a reporting tool for errors in an item's information. This is also what the Alican Reports feature is for. Directly under the item name, there's a place to type in a number and a plus next to it. We're going to hit that plus. What this will do is add this item to a list, moving us to the list portion of this guide. Before we click the plus, the clock icon next to the plus is a temporary list. Temporary lists automatically delete after you complete them. This is useful if you're not going to be repeatedly making an item. Hitting the plus brings us to the list sidebar where you can pick a new list or add the item to an existing list. For right now, we're going to make a new list. Pick a name for the list. For this guide, I'm just going to call this one Axe. There are two check marks at the bottom. Ephemeral is exactly like the quick list. It is deleted once the list is completed. Offline list stores the list in the cache of your browser, making the list available offline, but it cannot be shared and can only be accessed through the window the list was created in. I'm going to make an ephemeral list for this item. Once you click confirm on the window, a pop-up will show up in the upper right side of the screen saying the list has been created. 
It also gives you the option in that pop-up to go directly to the list. Now that we are in the list screen, you can see there's a lot of information being thrown at us right off the bat. This is a complete breakdown of all the raw materials needed to craft the completed items. These materials are broken down into different sections. Crystals is self-explanatory. It gives you a list of every crystal it will require to make the completed item and all pre-crafted items. Next is time nodes. There are timers in the middle of the screen in the time node section. If the timer is blue, the timed node is currently available to gather from until that timer expires. If it is white, the time remaining on the timer is how long until that node becomes available. If you click on the bell in the timer, you can set an alarm on the site to notify you when a node becomes available to gather from. This will give you a sound notification and a pop-up on the TeamCraft screen when that node is available. On the left side of the screen, these are the materials you're looking for and how many of each you need. Next to the name and the quantity, there's a triangle with an exclamation point inside of it. This is a warning from the TeamCraft site stating this character does not have the required folklore books to gather this item. This is one of the reasons it's important to review the previous video in this series if you haven't watched it yet, as I go over how to set up all the master books in your profile. If you click on this triangle, it will add the book to your profile and dismiss the warning. However, be cautious of accidentally clicking it when you do not have the book. You will have to go into your profile and deselect that book so it doesn't mess you up in the future. A few of these materials come from Ethereal Reduction or can be purchased with Purple Scripts. On the right hand side of the screen you can see icons for both of these. If you click on Ethereal Reduction, it shows you what items can be reduced to the type of Aether Sand you're looking for, as well as where they are located. Clicking on the purple script icon shows you how many scripts you need to purchase the item, as well as where the vendors are located. The next tier of items is the Tomes, Tokens, and Scripts tier. All of the items in this section can be purchased from a vendor for one of those three currencies. If you click on the icon on the right for the Aphorism Tome Stones, it tells you exactly how many Tome Stones you need to purchase the required amount of materials for the craft. It also tells you which vendor sells it, the closest Aetherite, and the coordinates for that vendor within the zone. The tier below that is gathering items. These are items that can be directly gathered by gathering classes. Each item is broken down into zone. If you click on the square by the zone name, it shows you the optimal path for that zone to get the required items. If you go all the way to the right, you will see a blue or yellow gathering icon. This shows you what type of node the item comes from, as well as the class you need to be on to get the item. If you click on this icon, it brings up a map with the node location and coordinates for the node. Next to this icon is the level requirement of the item. And next to the level is an alternate means of getting the item. In this example, it shows you can obtain these items from retainers or ventures, as well as obtaining the Dimethrite Ore from Voyages. If you click on the Venture icon, it gives you the stat requirements for the retainer for each perception breakpoint, and it also shows you how many of the items you can get at each breakpoint. If you click on the Voyages icon, it shows you each location you can send a voyage to obtain the item. One other useful section that's not in this specific list is the Dungeons, Drops, or Grand Company items. This section is for recipes that require monster drops as ingredients. A lot of leatherworking and alchemy recipes fall under this category. Using Gaja Leather as an example, you can see the Dungeons, Drops, or GC section has Gaja Hide in it. If you go to the right side of the screen, you can see there are a few different icons than we have seen thus far. Clicking on the gemstone icon will bring up a list of what gemstone vendors sell the Gaja hide, where those vendors are located, the closest aetherite, and how many gemstones that were required to obtain the items. Clicking on the angry face brings up the hunting screen. This shows you what monsters drop the items, their location, and the closest aetherite as well. If you click on the map pin icon next to the coordinates, it will bring up a map showing you exactly where the Gaja are located in the zone. For some recipes, there may be an icon with Grand Company seals. Clicking on this icon will show you how many seals you will need to purchase the required items from your Grand Company. The next tier down is the Precrafts tier. This shows you what to make the raw materials into to craft the selected item. On the right hand side of the screen it shows you which classes can craft the item, as well as the level requirements of the item. If you click on the class icon, it will bring up a sidebar showing the minimum stat requirements to begin crafting the item as well as the custom rotation sidebar, allowing you to either select the pre-saved rotation or to create a new one for that item. We will break down the crafting rotation section in the next video. 
Finally, if you look to the right middle of the screen, you will see green books. These books tell you that a master book is required to craft the item, and hovering over it tells you which master book you need. Clicking on the master book takes you to the search results page for that master book and shows you where you can obtain it and how many scripts are required to purchase it. Once you have obtained the requisite amount for an item, you can click the blue check mark on the right hand side to complete that item. Once completed, it will be highlighted in green. When you complete an entire tier, the tier will minimize and will be highlighted green. As you start completing items, some of the pre-craft items will start to turn blue. This means you have the required materials to craft that item. Once all items have been gathered and pre-craft items have been made, you can then finally start crafting the finalized item. When the item is completed, you can click the blue check mark. This will do one of two things. It will either delete the list if you chose to make an ephemeral list, or bring up a pop-up asking you to reset the list or delete the list if you did not choose to make an ephemeral list. If you plan to make the item again in the future, you can choose to reset it, and all the progressed items will reset. This will cause the list to be stored in your saved list under the list tab on the left. The last thing I want to go over in this section is the quantity box. On the right hand side, next to each blue check mark, there is a box that has a zero in it. Let's look at the lunar adamantite ore as an example. The box says zero of 12. Let's say you have four of the ore in your inventory. If you click in that box and replace the zero with a four, the quantity on the left side will go down, showing you only need eight more to complete that item. Now let's say we wanted to craft three classical battle axes instead of one. You will see an ellipsis next to the item name. Clicking on that will bring up a submenu for that item. Some of these menus we have gone over already, such as market board information. What I want to focus on right now is the edit amount command. Clicking on that will bring up a pop-up that lets you change how many items you want to craft. If we type 3 in that box and hit submit, it modifies the entire list to include the required materials to reflect 3 of the finished product instead of just 1. This is great if you want to mass produce items, it's useful for script farming, or if you want to make multiples of an item to sell on the market board. If you're finding this information useful, please hit the like button so YouTube can share it to more people. And if you've made it this far, you're awesome. As promised, the next section of this video is a huge way to save gil for non-crafters. Lists are important if you're not a crafter for a few reasons. If you're a gatherer, you can make a list for an item you think will be in high demand and target the base items required and sell them on the market board. If you're not a crafter or gatherer, you can use lists to see what items are required for something you may want someone to craft to you. On the far right hand side of the screen, near the top, there's a button with a money symbol. This opens up the pricing mode version of the list. This mode removes the item locations, timers, and all information for gathering the items yourself. It does add a few buttons that will allow you to import current market board prices for the materials. Often, you can purchase the base items for cheaper than the completed pre-crafted item, saving you a lot of gill over purchasing the pre-crafted items or buying the completed item outright. As you can see, using the example of the classical battle axe, it would cost 88,302 gil to purchase the base items. The finalized item cost is 134,054 gil to purchase or sell for a cost difference of 45,752. This is your profit. Due to the way some markets fluctuate, it may be worth checking these prices a couple of times before you purchase the base or pre-crafted items. While running some tests on this feature for the video, the price value changed greatly from saving 60k over the completed item to only 19k in the span of about 5 minutes. Do your homework and double check the market board prices before blindly purchasing. That about covers it for the search and list tools on TeamCraft. There are a few small things I did not go over, as they will tie into another video later in the series. The next thing we will go over is the crafting rotations tool. This tool is nothing short of a godsend for crafters. You're not going to want to skip over that video if you do any sort of crafting at all. If you missed the first video in the series, you can find it on the screen here. This is Nessie, and as always, take care of yourself.